this and welcome to this video in this we are going to see about the counters and time delays in microprocessor 8085 so first uh, we should know what is counters and time delays counters are mainly similar to the clock which used to count after doing some count then proceed to the next one just like if you see in the traffic signal uh, you have red green and orange uh, the red signal will appear for some times and then green signal and so on so uh, between those uh, the count it will count for some time isn't it so for example uh, the red may appear for say some 50 seconds so after that 50 seconds only the orange will, uh, the next will go that is uh, green and then after the the green appears for some 8 9 or 90 depending upon the traffic they will set that time then after that it will go to orange then orange will stay for 5 minutes 5 seconds or 10 seconds then it will go to red this is the pattern so uh, it counts some counting happens until that counting that particular signal will appear so after that it will change so that is for counting then the time delay what is the time delay till that 90 seconds the particular uh, light is made to appear so that is for you are delaying the next output okay while counting itself the counting itself lead to time delay so you make the uh, count to appear uh, not only appear to count and after a particular count only the next change takes place that is what time delay you make the next event to take some time so this together counter and time delay together uh, make the output to be visible to the user so for example another example when you have a, a clock a digital clock if the clock runs very fast you will not be able to see the output but there is a time delay that if there is a second till the next second occurs it will be visible if you have only hours and minutes till it completes all the seconds the 60 seconds that particular minute will appear so that is called time delay it so it makes uh, next output to be uh, not to appear till the particular count is over or else it will be very difficult for us to see the output imagine the traffic signal itself if you don't give 90 seconds delay for the green signal to change if you don't allow the orange signal to have some to stay that for 10 seconds what will happen uh, they keep on changing they keep on changing uh, so that uh, the those who are waiting for the signal they will find difficult to see which signal is appearing now so the counters and time delays are very important in many application so we we'll, we are going to see uh, those things here so likewise they are very much needed because in a traffic signal itself there is a microprocessor so wherever we have a designated work so for example if you take the washing machine that microprocessor is there what are all electronic items we use in our house we have the microprocessor they do a specific job if you take a washing machine spin then uh, wash all those things are there finally drain so all the drain will take place take place for some time then spin will take place for some time so all these are fixed programmed so for that time it will do that's what it will that the time delay time delay takes place in order to maintain the counter so counters are used primarily to to keep track of the events time delays are important in setting up reasonably accurate timing between two events that's what i said between red signal and uh, uh green signal there must be a uh, time delay or else we will not be able to identify so accurate timing between it is used to fix an accurate timing between two events 
So these together form the uh, uh, synchronous execution of any event. The process of designing counters and time delays using software instruction is far more flexible and less time consuming than the design process using hardware. So a little bit software while well, using the microprocessor will be more flexible than using the hardware. And setting the counter and time delay using the hardware, setting them using the software will be more flexible because there is no need to change the device. You just change in any problem, you change the instructions, then it will be more useful. You can uh, repeatedly try with different sections in a hardware. So first we'll see counters. In this we will be normally using in our programs also. For example, in for loop, we have already used that. For in for loop, what we use for i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. So that itself we have counters. I is a counter. So it leads the for loop to uh, execute for a particular n time. Same way do and while loop. In do while loop, we initialize a counter outside, then inside a counter, uh, inside a uh, loop, we, uh, we, we make the counter to move towards its exit. So for a particular time, it keeps on executing. So the programming technique used to instruct the microprocessor to, to repeat a task is called looping. So mostly it will be used in looping. A loop can be set up to change the sequence of execution and perform the task again. So based on some condition, they repeatedly. Once the condition is satisfied, it will come out of the loop. That's what uh, loop set up. And here we can set the loops to be of two types. One is continuous loop and conditional loop. Continuous loop means they repeatedly do the same thing, just like our traffic signal. They continuously loop. Only thing they check is the time. After a particular time, immediately they change to the next uh, condition. That is from uh, red to green and so on. Conditional loop. Conditional loop is when a particular condition is satisfied. Okay. So for example, if you find a factorial of an n number, till that n number is reached, you repeat that loop. So conditional loop, it repeats the task until certain data conditions are met. Now we'll see the continuous loop. The program with the continuous loop does not stop repeating until the system is reset. Here we can say the traffic signal until the power is gone. They repeatedly do the same thing. The system is reset. So here, start, then perform the task, go back and repeat again and again. Counters. Here, continue conditional loop. A conditional loop is set up by the conditional jump instructions. In other languages, what we have seen is we, you can use for loop, do loop, while loop, and there we set the conditions. Okay? When the loop, we decide when the loop has to come out. So in order to do that, initialize the counter, then make the counter to either increment or decrement in order to reach the condition. Then finally, uh, it looks, uh, some condition, some statements will be inside the uh, loop. So these instructions here in a uh, microprocessor, we have the flag bits. So based on the flag bits, we may jump to a, a particular uh, locations in our instruction. So all the uh, conditional loops in microprocessor are based on the flag bit. That is five flag bits. See how five flag bits, five flag bits, zero flag, carry bit and then axillary carry then parity bit and then sign bit so based uh, our program uh, so for example if you do addition there may be overflow so in that case carry bit will be set so based on that you can take a decision so like that uh, either using a decrement or a decrement of a particular register and you can check whether that particular register is a uh, uh, that result that particular uh, arithmetic operation or logical operations result in some uh, flag bit uh, the affecting of flag bits and based on that you can jump so these instruction check flags and repeat the specified task if the conditions are satisfied they include counting and indexing a loop counter is set up by loading a register with a certain value so how you can set a loop 
by making a counter by setting up a counter so how you can set a counter in microprocess in other languages you make it to be a variable it be a variable you are saying a counter say for example if it is a for loop for i equal to 0 so i is a variable that you make i equal to 0 mean that you are initializing here in microprocessor you can use the registers a b c d e h l registers are there you can use those registers to set a counter not only that you can use a memory location also as a counter you can set the particular memory location to be a counter so all those things can be done then using the dcr or the inr the content of the registers are updated inside the loop then when the condition is met how if the conditions can be met because of this dcr and inr they will affect the flag bits so you can check the flag bits and then based on that conditional jump instructions are available those can be used in order to jump to a particular condition so you loop is set up with a conditional jump instruction that loop back or not depending on whether the count has reached the termination count the operation of a loop counter can be described using the following feature initialize body of the loop initialize means you select the counter then after that you move inside the loop to body of the loop update the count either by decrement or increment and has it reached the final count if yes then come out of the loop if no then do the looping again and a loop counter can be set up with a, a single register register pair single register means just b either you can select a b register or c register or d and so on 8 bit register or a registered pair when i say registered pair together b and c together form a 16 bit register d b c d and e together form a registered pair h and l together form a registered pair likewise you can use or within loop within loop so we will see all these techniques now so before moving towards the usage of counters with single register or a uh, register pad you will see time delay because these two together only form the magic so time delay how to set a time delay that load the delay register for that also we can use the registers and body of the loop and is this the final count it's similar to our counters this has it reached the final count yes me no means it's go here s yes means then i haven't entered this sorry here no means it go into the body of the loop and do it again here s yes means it comes out of the loop so the procedure used to design a specific delay is it is similar to the top the used to set up a counter the register is loaded with a number depending on the time delay required and then the register is decremented until it reaches zero by setting up a loop with a conditional jump instruction the loop causes the delay so it just you can introduce this delay in between the appearance of the traffic signal so that has to appear for now so counting is it will count up to 90 times in order to maintain that counting while it is counting since it has to appear you have to introduce a time delay so 90 minutes uh, sorry 90 seconds time delay has to be introduced so both uh, it's like that so the loop causes the delay depending upon the clock period of the system now the time delay can be calculated in this case that is in uh, in terms of microprocessor how the time delay can be calculated we already know each instruction must pass through the following cycle because upcode fetch memory read and memory write what is upcode fetch that already we have seen say for example move a comma b means move a comma b is an 8 bit uh, it is a single byte instruction 8 by 8 bit instruction so in that case it is only upcode fetch as well as memory read suppose we have mva a comma 32 means for mva a itself is an upcode and 32 is a uh, data that it's a, so that is another 8 bit and the mva a is another bit so together it is 2 byte instruction like this we have seen 3 byte instruction load uh, uh, load uh, load lda lda command sta command all those things are three byte instruction so what happens we have for three byte instruction four machine cycles and for uh, 
single byte instruction we have one machine cycle so one machine cycle will be consist of four t states uh, all those things we have already seen in the previous videos if not you please go through that uh, uh, get you uh, get uh, uh, get used uh, get um, some knowledge from that and then you come and see that so opcode fetch each instruction uh, they have different uh, they will pass through different uh, cycles that is nothing but opcode fetch memory read and memory write knowing the combinations of cycles one can calculate how long such an instruction would require to complete this things also we have seen in the previous video uh, how number of bytes as i said whether it is a single instruction two byte instruction or three byte instruction so based on that we will calculate the time delay the number of machine cycles and number of t states so how uh, uh, t states is calculated this also we have already seen but anyway this uh, refresh uh, refresh your memory time delay is how you can calculate number of t states into the clock period of a particular system so for example mvib 45h is a two byte instruction and the hex code equivalent is for mvib it is 06 and this is data byte 45h in the above code 06 is the opcode fetch that is one machine cycle which includes a 4t state and 45h is one machine cycle which is of 3t state so the total time is what 3 4t plus 3t which is 7t and if you consider the clock period is to be the 0 0.5 mu s that is 1 by f frequency where consider the frequency is to be 2 megahertz so that 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 is now 7 into 0 0.5 will give you 3.5 microseconds for execution of just one this instruction so time delay can be designed using the following techniques using one register using the register pair, using a loop within a loop. So all these things you will see in the next video.